Alright guys, so I know we've been talking a lot about Hardware 4 and how it's going to go on to newer vehicles. And now we got the confirmation from Elon saying that it isn't going to be retrofitable. So with that being said, a lot of people have been commenting and asking whether they should pick up their Model Ys or Model 3s and if it's going to be on the Model S and X. Right now, I personally think that it's going to go on to the Model 3 and Model Y just because they are more of a mass marketed vehicle. And if anything happens, it's not going to contribute to the luxury factor of the Model S and X. But if you guys do have a delivery coming up very soon, I would advise you guys just to hold off about a month or two to make sure that you get the hardware for the new radars. This will future proof your car in the long run and you'll have years to go with this vehicle before you have to replace it with any other new technology. Now, if you guys want to know more about it, I did make specific videos on it. I'll drop a link right up top there as well as the description below. But for this video here, I really want to focus on FSD beta and the subscription model for Canadians. All right, so for a lot of Canadians, I'll there including myself we're really questioning why we aren't getting a FSD beta subscription just like down in the south I don't have a solid answer to that but I think I have a pretty good idea of why that's the case right now and the same goes for your annual connectivity for your data plan within your car we're not offered that option compared to down south where they are offered a lot of other subscription model options for their vehicles now I'm going to start off with the most likely reason why and then we'll end it off with the least likely reason why uh, so subscription model is not available in Canada just yet. All right, so the number one thing here, I think it has to do with regulations and the government up in Canada. We're very strict with our energy usage. And then we also have a lot of regulated bodies here that manage certain things. And one of them is Measurement Canada. And you guys know all about them, how they started charging by the minute for superchargers. Now, one of them being Measurement Canada. And because of them, they forced us to use for the longest time, pay by the minute instead of pay by the kilowatt. Essentially what it comes out to is that we were paying more in electricity while supercharging than what it would be to fill up a Toyota Prius with gasoline. That is one of the reasons why maybe we're not seeing the annual subscription yet. It probably has to go through a regulated body somewhere within Canada before everything gets approved. Now the other part that I think has to do with country itself stopping Tesla from moving over here is the fact that it's very different in certain parts of each province. I originally came from Vancouver in British Columbia and just recently I moved over to Edmonton and I noticed that things are very different in BC versus Alberta in terms of regulations. In BC, electricity is regulated. So I mean, it's a fixed amount. We use hydro, so it's very, very cheap. In terms of housing costs, every month you would be paying 30 bucks for a regular family usage. Whereas over in Alberta, everything is unregulated. You're searching around for different companies and they can jack up the price to however they want. Now, just like us, Tesla is going to have to reach out to an electricity provider, make a deal with them, and then charge on top to make sure that the superchargers can be maintained. They have to make a profit somehow, even though Tesla has said that it is not a profit machine. They are not intending to make money off of it. Now, I can't say for the rest of the promises, they might differ quite a bit more than what I'm used to here. But already coming from BC to Alberta, there is such a big difference in pricing alone. It doesn't make sense for superchargers down in BC to charge maybe 20 cents a kilowatt and then moving to Alberta it charges you two dollars a kilowatt but realistically that is the price that I can see from what I'm paying here versus what I'm paying over there in terms of supercharging there's hundreds of supercharger in BC alone in Vancouver alone there's at least a hundred superchargers whereas in Alberta you have literally two superchargers from two giant cities between Calgary and Edmonton you literally have two and one is under construction so that's literally the truth here it is just not feasible for Tesla to build out their supercharging networks in cities like these. So until the regulating body of the province of Alberta or any of the other province starts to regulate their electricity, their gas usage, and a lot of other renewable sources, they're going to deal with a very low EV adoption. Now, this is where I tie back FSD subscription model in Canada, and this is where it makes it very difficult for Tesla to make a deal with a certain province and then make other deals with other provinces on different rules. All right, so to sum it all up, I think this has to do with the government up in Canada. Not every single one is in order with each other, makes it very hard, and this is why FSD beta subscription is not available yet. And and this is probably why we don't have any subscription model really up in Canada just yet. All right, so let's go over to the least likely reason why, although I still think that it makes sense based on just purely revenue for the company and the statistics of how many people are subscribing or how many people are purchasing FSD, the population and the wealth of each place. 
So realistically here up in Canada, we don't have the population to make enough money from subscription models. I personally think because a lot of cellular companies and a lot of different types of companies are struggling to expand their network because there's so less people here. Now that's one thing, but the other thing is the low EV adoption outside of Vancouver, BC, literally every other province, literally every other city, they're still driving gas vehicles because winter here is ridiculously cold and EVs don't work well. In BC, specifically Vancouver, the weather almost never sees cold, it almost never sees snow. So it makes the perfect environment for Teslas and other EVs out there. Pretty much every EV startup, including Tesla, comes to Vancouver first, mainly because there is a clientele for that. There's a lot of wealthier people living in that city. And then the climate just works for it, as well as the downtown area making the perfect place for a showroom. Now I'm just comparing it to where I'm living right now in Edmonton. There is no place really, and rarely do I ever see Teslas on the road. And there's definitely a reason for that. So like I said, population wise, we don't have a lot of people. And then on top of that, we don't have many places that Tesla can really build out the clientele other than in Vancouver and possibly in Toronto. Now speaking about clientele, there are a lot more people that are able to fork out $20,000 at the moment just because they can afford a very expensive Model S or X. But the likelihood of somebody driving a Model 3 or Y paying $300 on top of the monthly payments are very low and the only people who really can pay for that is somebody that can already purchase a Model X or S to begin with. So like I said, the clientele is very different and Tesla seems to stick to their current pricing regardless of where people are living in the world. They don't adjust according to their currency, according to their budget. So $200 USD compared to somebody living in the Bay Area versus somebody living up in Canada it just doesn't equate to the same amount but Tesla does a straight conversion and even adds a fee on top of it just to make sure that the conversion rate does not fluctuate enough where they don't make profit. Now the next thing here is that FSD beta does not perform very well anywhere outside of San Francisco, California right now. Realistically guys, all those videos you guys are seeing online are ones that drive very well in certain places that FSD beta has been running for a very long time and engineers are working in that location. So if it doesn't even work in 80% of the states right now, even though people are saying it does, there's so much trouble to it. Bring it up in Canada where there is snow, fall, win pretty much all year round you're gonna have to deal with that situation and that brings up a lot more lawsuits when it does come time so realistically the people who can fork out twenty thousand dollars are the ones who really already know about FSD beta and they're the ones who can really control the vehicle when it does make major mistakes but if you do release the subscription model, the rest of Canada who don't know anything about FSD beta are gonna essentially think that it's full self-driving and then driving on the freeway or the highway in snow, in fog, in darkness most of the year, they're gonna have some kind of crash and this is where Tesla is gonna be at fault. Now when I say Tesla at fault, it doesn't necessarily mean that Tesla is gonna be at fault for the vehicle crash, but they are gonna be all over the headlines and people are going to say that it's their fault and it's gonna affect a lot of things including their brand image. So just to sum up this section of it, I think Tesla is just playing it very safe and they're not releasing the monthly subscription for Canada just because it is not safe enough to do so just yet. But eventually when they do have more data and the car is more confident in these environments, I'm sure Tesla is gonna offer the monthly subscription. There's no reason that they're not gonna do so. Even if they get in 20% of people owning Teslas to subscribe, they're gonna make a profit. So it's a no brainer that they're gonna release it anytime now. But at the moment right now, Elon is very silent on it. Anybody that asks any question regarding a subscription model in Canada, he just straight up ignores it. So this really indicates that Tesla is not ready to offer the subscription just yet. And the ones that are able to purchase it, you guys really are the safe ones that know how to handle the system. So yeah guys, these are just my personal thoughts on why FSD beta subscription is not available in Canada right now. A lot of people are waiting for it and a lot of people are holding off because at the moment, $20,000 is definitely not worth it. You can go out and buy a brand new Civic or Corolla base model and have a secondary car instead of paying this amount just to beta test the software. But possibly for $200 or $300 per month Canadian, somebody might try it for a month or two. So there you guys go. These are my thoughts. If you guys have any of your own, please drop it in the comments below and I'll definitely try to respond to every single one of it. This is John once again. Peace out.